In the late 80s and early 90s, my dad used to always pull me aside on a Saturday and say, hey Matt, we need you to come down to the shop today. I need you to do some work around the shop. And I knew that meant cleaning toilets and sweeping the floors and trimming the hedges and running errands in the truck all day. Something I wasn't looking forward to. I wasn't really interested in motorcycles back then when I was about between 12 and 16 years old. I did take a moment every once in a while and just watch the bikes come in for service, come in for parts. Something I noticed about all the bikes, they all had ape hangers, loud exhaust, fishtails. They were all very much the Chicano style that we talk about today. The original location of Laidlaw's Harley-Davidson was on Garvey Avenue in Rosemead, just east of downtown LA. It's where my grandfather Bob Laidlaw set up shop for the first time in 1958. Little did I know that the bikers and customers coming in out of the shop every day were heavily influenced by the Latino subculture within the biker community. This Chicano influence and styling and accessorization of Harley Davidson's was really all I knew. I felt like large ape hangers, long fishtail exhaust that was extremely loud, tons of chrome, big spoke wheels, white walls, lowered, bagged. I felt like this was Harley-Davidson. I felt like all these accessories were synonymous with what Harley-Davidson was. It wasn't until later in life that I realized there were actually other styles in Harley-Davidson's. But as a young kid, that style was Harley-Davidson. It was at that point in my life where I fell in love with ape hanger handlebars. And I knew my first Harley-Davidson I would own would have big, tall ape hanger handlebars. Some people called them Harlistas, some people called them Cholos, whatever you want to call them, they rode Viklas. We decided to take a ride down to East LA to Whittier Boulevard, the birthplace of the lowrider. Andrew and Steve wanted to show me around, show me the ropes, but we couldn't take any old Harleys down there. We had to take three Viklas down there. So let me do a walk around these three Viklas that we took down there. So first off here, we got a 2005 Softail Springer FL STSC. So this has the FL front end, which is a little bit wider than the, the FX STSC, which is the, the narrower front end. I personally prefer the FL front end. I like that wider stance. The Springer front end is about as iconic and nostalgic looking as you can possibly get on a Harley Davidson. I absolutely love the Springer front end. I really wish Harley Davidson would bring it back. I heard they discontinued it because they couldn't integrate the ABS module in the Springer front end. That and they just it's just really antiquated technology that just doesn't perform really well. But I really would like Harley Davidson to re-engineer a Springer front end, one that performs better. It doesn't have to be the best performing you know, front end in the world. This is a cruiser after all, but that look is just absolutely iconic. You got fishtail exhaust on here, fishtails that protrude out the back uh, further than the fender. Definitely that low rider look. You got to have a dual exhaust, one pipe on, on either side. And of course you can only achieve that with aftermarket exhaust. I think the exhaust is Samson. It could be wrong, but then you've got your 16 inch ape hangers as well which is obviously you have to have that on a Vikla, either that or beach bars. But yeah, just the badging on the tank on this bike and everything is absolutely beautiful. It's on airbags as well, so you can slam it when you get in the parking lot, lift it up a little bit when you get out on the highway. But spoke wheels on this bike as well. This is an absolutely beautiful Vikla here. All the bikes in this video, by the way, are for sale currently at Laidlaw's Harley-Davidson. Next up, we got a 2007 Softail Heritage FLSTC. You got white walls, laced wheels, 21 inch front laced wheel. You've got the Carlini Gangster Ape hangers, 16 inches. I believe this is the exact same exhaust system as on the Springer. I think this is the Samson Cholo exhaust. I could be wrong. If you know, comment in the comment section. Let me know if I'm wrong on this. Chrome everything, chrome pulley, belt cover, chrome swing arm, chrome engine guards. You've got that old school classic horn there, chrome front end. 
chrome trimmer on the fenders. This thing is all chromed out. Steel braided lines, chrome switch housings. You got the old style mirrors as well. The teardrop mirror. So yeah, this bike definitely has that Vigla style in spades here. Real classic paint job as well. You got the toolbox on the right hand side there next to the oil tank as well. This does have the 96 cubic inch engine. All LED Daymaker headlamp and passing lamps on this as well, which is a nice touch. And we'll have Andrew start this one up as well. This last bike is the only new bike in the group here. This is a 2019 Road King Standard. For a long time, Harley Davidson had a Road King Classic. They also had a Road King Custom and other variations of the Road King over the years. But now Harley Davidson has reduced their offering to just a regular Road King Standard. They still offer the Road King Classic in other parts of the world where I'm assuming it's more popular. But we outfitted this bike uh, in a big way to kind of give it that classic look. So you've got the white wall tires and spoke wheels, which does not typically come on the regular Road King. You got Carlini Gangster apes on here 16 inches and you got a chrome front end just a lot of added chrome chrome trim around all the headlamps and everything chrome axle nut covers polished rotors and you got a lot of the you know old school harley davidson motor co uh, derby cover and other side covers on this bike as well you got chrome switch housings you got teardrop mirrors on there and the steel braided lines you got the chrome trim around the rear tail lights as well and so you know we just really outfitted this bike to kind of give it that beakless style to it it was more cost effective starting with the Road King Classic when they offered it, but since they no longer offer it, however, I will say a lot of people prefer the hard bags that are lockable and have the paint on them as opposed to the leather bags that came on the Road King Classic. Really the core models over the years that I've seen that are the best bikes for a starting point for a uh, Chicano style Harley Davidson is your Deluxe, your Softail Heritage, and your Road King. And I'm not saying it's limited to only those bikes, but those three bikes I feel like are the best starting point to give this style to and apply this style to. Steve Garcia from Lay Law Service Department. I'm gonna talk to you a little bit uh, today about the Vicla style Vicla video that we did today up in uh, East LA today. First things first, what's a Vicla? Uh, coming from Mexican heritage, uh, Mexican Vicla is uh, pretty much low rider style, gangster style, cholo style, um, Los Angeles, you know, style Harley Davidson. Growing up in Mexican heritage, you know, thinking of Harley Davidson is uh, pretty much what you see right here. Um, fish tails, and ape hangers, gangster style bars, you know, chrome, every piece of chrome you can think of. Mexican blanket, obviously missing, but you know, everyone's got the Mexican blanket on the, you know, top of the headlight. Uh, crazy sound systems, you know, fortunately this one doesn't have it, but with these crazy loud uh, fish tails, it doesn't really matter. Andrew and I went out today in East Los Angeles, 
kind of cool, really cool experience, you know, from hearing stories from, you know, my pops, you know, uncles, friends, uh, cruising the boulevard myself in my 63 Bug, um, cruising in my dad's heritage, just, just pretty cool feeling knowing that, you know, my dad did it growing up, my uncle's family, just pretty much being a part of the Mexican heritage is really cool. No better feeling, man, than writing down, you know, a piece of history with your boulevard. You think Whittier Boulevard, you think Tepeyac, King Taco, Whittier Boulevard, the famous Whittier Boulevard sign, just the lifestyle, you know, riding down the road, smelling fresh tortillas being made, tacos, you know, just Mexican blankets, anything provided on that street is just pretty much heritage and it's pretty cool. You know, I, I wouldn't see myself being in, you know, wanting to be anything else, <laughs> a part of it, you know. Uh, took Matt out today, you know, him experiencing it, you know, it's pretty crazy for him. You know, it's an everyday lifestyle for us and him seeing what we do on a weekly basis on the weekend. It, I, I think he thought it was pretty cool, you know. Nothing like uh, riding down the boulevard, you know, your custom bike. You put a lot of money into this thing and you want to be flashy. I mean, we're known to be a little bit of show-offs here in uh, L.A., you know. I think uh, we get everybody's attention with the loud pipe, the bars, the paint, you know. I mean, it's pretty cool. We did some pretty gnarly riding on the freeway. I think we uh, people knew that we were coming into town because uh, we kind of took over the freeway. <laughs> Five freeway, ten freeway, and mobbing, just LA style. You know, that's what we do. Coming from a Dyna, you know, family, jumping on this, I mean, a hundred times better. Just, you know, nothing like it. Nothing like, you know, the pipes, the looks, you know, everybody just looking at you. It, it feels cool. Original Tepeyac Cafe uh, out here at Ball Heights. We decided to grab lunch and uh, ride the bikes around East LA. Uh, Manny's been here for over 60 years. It's it's a staple in the East LA community. Uh, a lot of people that grew up in the neighborhood or around East LA know about El Tepeyac and the food that he's brought to us over the years. Um, I remember him being here. He was very in touch with the community. He treated everyone like they were family. He'd stand at the door, just greeted everyone as they came in, really down to earth type of guy. Uh, and then occasionally take a tequila shot with you every once in a while. So uh, the food is great here. And um, yeah, this is really what represents East LA. Something, you know, small town type feeling. Um, little cafe like this that makes really good food and, and people that are really involved in the community it's, it's, it's something really cool and I felt like we had to come and eat here. What's up guys, Andrew here from Laidlaw's Harley Davidson and uh, we just got back from riding the Viklas through the birthplace of 
the lowrider. A little bit about myself, I grew up in Monterey Park, which is just uh, east of East LA. So growing up, you know, as a little skater kid going around and you know, through high school riding and skating through uh, East LA. A lot of my friends lived in East LA, Ball Heights area. So I was kind of always surrounded by that culture and the, that um, low rider scene and, and all the, the older Veterano dudes that are, you know, had their low riders, their, their shoe box cars, stuff like that. It was pretty, it was pretty badass. So all my buddies living out there. So I was just surrounded about it a lot. So I always have a soft spot for these bikes. and and the cars as well. So uh, cruising up and down Whittier Boulevard, Highway 72, kind of just where this whole culture was born. Um, all from, you know, the Impalas and, and uh, the, those cool low riders and, you know, flipping the switches on, on all those types of cars and slamming the rear ends, parking up the, the, off, the, off the concrete. So it's really cool riding a, a bike, something like this, and, and just getting all the cool thumbs up and, and the looks. Um, cruising up and down the street. Another cool thing about uh, Whittier Boulevard, which is Highway 72, Harley Davidson actually made uh, a bike, the Sportster 72, to pay homage to that era and that culture, kind of that low rider scene. So something 21 inch front wheel, white walls, kind of loud paint job, which is really cool. So it's really cool that the, the motor company actually did something to, to, to acknowledge that. Basically what makes a low rider is the name in itself. It's, it's got to have that right stance. So the attitude comes 100% from the altitude of the bike. So when it's slammed to the ground, man, that's that's when your arms are up in the air and you, you have that attitude and, and it basically says don't, don't mess with me. Um, 21 inch front wheel, chrome everything. If it's available in chrome, you throw it on your bike. 16, 18 inch ape hangers or beach bars and something loud and borderline obnoxious, which for me, hearing it, you know, before I was really into motorcycles, hearing these bikes going up and down the street was kind of obnoxious. You know, it was just loud and, you know, nine, 10 o'clock at night, that thing is blah, like screaming, man. But uh, I get it now. I, I, I get it. Riding one of these things, it just, you want to be seen, you want to be heard, and that's that's what this bike emulates. It, it's clean, it has just everything that screams look at me. I take care of my bike and everything like that. So cruising down to a car meet or a you know car show or bike night and, and just kind of just showing off of what, what you got. Slam, slamming the thing, bag it out and, and lower it, man. That's that's t totally the style. I recommend going to uh, El Tepeyac Cafe. That's a, a place for me as growing up in the era inside and out of East LA. Manning El Tepeyac was pretty much a, a household name. In, in my residence. I mean, we'd go there all the time. You knew about this spot, it was cool. And, you know, you go on a Sunday, everyone after church is in their church clothes there, just waiting for their Manny special burrito that's like three pounds. It's pretty cool, man. I mean, it's something that's really stapled in, in the community in, in East LA, so. Yeah, growing up, I was always into cars or, or motorcycles, you know, anything mechanical, planes, jets, you know, it always started from something. But uh, growing up, you know, in my, high school years and even after high school a lot of my friends who lived in East LA went to Garfield High School, Roosevelt High School and it was just a really cool tight-knit community as far as East LA. It, it always seems like you know someone that you know know someone in, in that city so it, it's really cool and I, I really I really dig that. Um, but yeah growing up it's funny all my buddies that they were a little older than me but all my buddies that lived in East LA, they always had parents. Either one of them did not speak English at all, and the other one spoke broken English. So it was mostly in the households there growing up, either the mother didn't speak Spanish or the dad didn't, but I can always go over there and have a great meal and always see one of the cars being worked on and hang out in certain neighborhoods where you got motorcycle guys and, and low rider guys and they're always tinkering around with something playing music at two in the morning but it was always really cool i always appreciated that that aspect that culture because it was something that was always surrounded by and a lot of my friends who were into that stuff so it was very familiar to me and and you know and going through the neighborhoods of that that city was it's really cool especially on something like this man and you just feel right at home you know just arms in the air changing lanes looking under your armpit feels really cool felt like my beard was growing Ha <laughs> ha!